Hi everyone and welcome to the Wine Shop Talk. I'm your host, Somalia Aranozar, and I'm so happy that you're here with me today. If we haven't met before, it's lovely to have you here. And if we have, welcome back. Now, for those of you who are new, you should know that I have been a professional sommelier for almost 20 years now, and it is my passion and my privilege to make learning about wine not only fun and easy, but also practical. And what does practical mean in regards to wine? It means that I wanna be able to empower you so that you can make confident wine choices, not only when you're going out for something fancy, but in your everyday lives when you're creating memories for family and friends, and just at a simple dinner on a Tuesday, for example. Now, this week, I wanna talk about a wine style and a collection of wines that I get asked questions about all the time. And the wine that I get asked questions about is Amarone. So in today's episode, I'm going to explain to you why Amarone is considered such a special wine, how it is made. But not only am I going to share with you details about Amarone, I'm going to share with you three other wine styles that are made from the exact same grape blend in the exact same area. And I want you to think of them as one whole family. So Amarone being the big brother, and then I'm gonna introduce you to its sweet little sister and two younger brothers. So if you're ready to learn about not only Amarone, but its siblings as well, and you love Italian red wines, this is the episode for you. So if you're ready, let's dive in and get started on today's episode. Let's get started. I'm gonna be answering a few questions all about Amarone and his siblings. And what I'm gonna be covering is, first, what area of Italy it comes from and what makes it so special. I'm also gonna be talking about the grape varieties that are used in all of the wine styles that come from this area. I'm gonna talk about why Amarone is different from other wine styles and why the price point may be consistently higher than other wines you're going to see on the shelf. And I'm gonna give you food pairings for all of the wine styles that we're gonna talk about today. So you're gonna come away with four different Italian wines to know, as well as some food pairings to go with them. So let's break this down first of where does Amarone come from? So Amarone comes from the Veneto region, and this is the one region that Venice is within, and it comes from an area called Val Policella. And you may be saying, hey Erin, I've seen Val Policella on a wine label, 100%. And Val Policella actually translates into Valley of Many Cellars, and we actually have ancient wine cellars dating back to Roman times within this area. And this is a beautiful place to visit if you are visiting Venice and sometime in your future on your wine travels, then definitely if you can take a day trip out and visit this area, it is a beautiful place. I promise you will leave a mark on your heart to go and see it. So the wines are coming from this one area. Now I wanna talk about the four different wines that we're going to be talking about today. So you know about Amarone. So Amarone is the big brother. I want you to think of him as the, the top of the list. Under Amarone, I'm gonna go a little bit to the side in that I'm going to say that the next one is a sweet wine style, and this is Recciota de Valpolicella. So Recciota is a sweet wine style. So we have his Amarone the big brother, we have Recciota as the beautiful, sweet, younger sister. Then we're also going to talk about two of his brothers. We're going to talk about Val Policella, which is the youngest brother, and we're going to talk about Rapasso, who is the middle brother. And so we have four different wine styles here. So if you are listening in in the audio format, I want you to think of just putting this as a list. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to have a chart down the side beside me where all these names are going to be able to be listed below. So you're going to see Amarone at the top, Recciotto de Valpolicella, then you're going to have Rapasso, and then you're going to have Valpolicella. So you're going to have four different wine styles. Now, why is this important? Because all four of these wine styles interconnect with the ways we make them. They also all use the same grapes. So there are three main quality grapes, if you will, used within making this. Now, there is a fourth grape, but it's in very small quantity, so I'm gonna focus on these three grapes, and they are Corvina, which is considered the quality grape of the area. We're gonna work with Corvina, Molinera, and Rondinella. So these three grapes come together. These wines are always gonna be a blend. There is no single variety Amarone, for example. Always a blend with Corvina being the top wine. Now let's talk about what makes them different and how we make them. And I'm gonna get to Amarone last. So let's start with talking about Valpolicella. 
Valpolicella is made like any other wine in that we pick the grapes, that's always a blend, we ferment it to dryness, and you can treat Valpolicella like anywhere you would use a Beaujolais or a Pinot Noir wine, for example. Now, what you, what you should also know about Valpolicella, that depending on the label, that it's something to look for on the label, is you may just see Valpolicella Classical, you may also see Valpolicella Superiore. What's the difference? Superiore needs to be above 12% alcohol. The Superiore has a legal requirement of a higher alcohol level. So something to think about there. So just something to know there. Now let's move on to Amarone. So I'm gonna jump over Rapasso because first we have to learn how we make Amarone because it's tied into Rapasso. So when we make Amarone, we pick the grapes in the field, but ideally we're going to pick them a little bit later if possible. And what we might do with some of the bunches, it was we might put a little bit of a tick to allow the bunches to hang off the vine, but they're not growing anymore. So we may break the stem of the grape, if you will, and let them hang. The reason we do this in the late harvest is when we make Amarone grapes, we want those grapes to start to dehydrate. We don't want them to keep filling with water, with liquid. And as a grape ripens, it continues to swell. It fills up with liquid. And we want grapes for Amarone to be more of a concentrated sugar. And so we may let them start to dry out in the field before we take them back to the winery. Now, when we pick the grapes, when we're making Amarone, we don't actually take them back to the winery and press them the way we normally do in winemaking. Normally, when we make red wines, we pick the grapes, we take them back, we press them, we leave them with their skins, and we allow the fermentation to start. When we make Amarone, we pick the grapes, we take them back, and then we lay them out on straw mats, and we're gonna let those grapes sit in the attic or in a barn or some sort of dry location that has good airflow through it for four to five months. And the reason we let those grapes sit is we want them to shrivel up. We still need some liquid in them. We don't want them like raisins. So we're going to sort of have like a shriveled grape, if you will. There's still some liquid, but it's getting more concentrated sugars. Then when we decide that they are the right amount of dried, not fully dried, but en enough of the shriveling, if you will, then we're going to put them in and we're going to squish them. We're going to squish the juice out. We're going to use the normal fermenting process now. We're going to get a much smaller amount of liquid, of juice from those grapes because we've allowed them to dehydrate, but we're going to hit much more concentrated flavors and sugars in those grapes. Now we're going to allow that finite amount of juice that we've pressed off of it to start to ferment. Because there's such a large amount of sugar in the grapes, this fermentation is long and slow because the yeast have to keep working because Amarone is always gonna be a dry wine style. And this is something I get asked all the time. If you've had a glass of Amarone, what you're going to experience on the palate is a very rich, luscious, full-bodied wine filled with dark cherry and raspberry and blackberry flavors. It's a beautiful wine, but it is very rich. It's almost a meal in a glass if you will. And because of the dried flavors of the fruit, because we let those grapes shrivel, the fruit flavor is so pronounced that many people believe that there's some sugar in Amarone. It's not, it is fermented to dryness, but because of the amount of sugar and the flavors coming from those grapes, we're also going to get higher alcohol levels. It's not uncommon to see an Amarone at 15 to 16 and a half percent. So I warn you, it will sneak up on you because it is a delicious wine, but the alcohol level, because there's so much sugar, and sugar, when yeast eat sugar, it creates the alcohol. The more sugar, the higher alcohol content we get. So just a little word of warning, Amarone is delicious, but it will sneak up on you. So just be careful with it there um, as you're enjoying a glass or two. Now that we have the fermentation going, we're gonna to ferment to dryness, and then we're going to put it into bottles, obviously. And that's how, it, that's a very quick TV version, if you will, of how we make Amarone. Now, Let's go back to how we make Rapasso. Now Rapasso, you're going to think that he's the middle brother. So he's got a little bit of his younger brother and some traits from his older brother. And how, and how does that work in winemaking? It means a Rapasso starts as a Valpolicella. It starts with those same three grapes. It's going to be fermented dry and think of it as Valpolicella. But to make it a Rapasso, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take those barrels that we allowed the Amarone wine to rest in as we, as we fermented it and it sat and it aged for a while in oak barrels. And then when we took the liquid out of oak barrels, when we made Amarone, we leave a little bit of sludge behind. We leave a little bit of liquid. Think about it if you've made a soup or something and you're just leaving the chunks behind, if you will. You want the juice off of it. We don't want all of the chunks when we rack that wine, which means when we move it from a barrel and we keep filtering it down. And so we take the Valpolicella wine, we take the younger brother, and we put it in the nearly empty barrels that made the Amarone. There's still a little bit of Amarone wine and the chunks and the grape skins and the floaties and all that, if you will, at the bottom of the barrels. And we're going to put that Valpolicella wine into the barrels where the Amarone rested. And what happens then is Rapasso is the best of the two brothers. So he, the middle child, if you will, has a bit of the Valpocella, so a lovely lighter mouthfeel, but because of that extra little bit of lift that the intensity and flavors from the Amarone brings to it, it now has a bit of extra flavors and body to it. So to me, a Rapasso is a perfect pizza wine. It's just a wonderful wine. It's a style that I always have in my house and it is delicious. So Rapasso, think of Rapasso, like I said, as the middle brother who has the best traits have both his younger brother and his older brother, and they've come together to make a wonderful wine. So that is Rapasso. So think Rapasso again, same three grapes, all of these wine styles, but Rapasso starts as a Valpolicella. We take it and we put it in the barrels that we just took the Amarone out and we allow it to sit for a period of time to be able to lift its flavors and body so that we create a middle child wonderful wine. And that's my... And that's my analogy, if you will, of understanding Rapasso. Now, because of the extra work that goes into Amarone with the extra drying time, the longer fermentation, this is where the value will go. And we can only make finite amounts of it every year because we can only take so many of the grapes to be used in Amarone and we only take the best grapes. So this is where the price point of Amarone comes in. It's also a very collectible and ageable wine. So if you are starting to collect wines or this is a passion of yours, Amarone is definitely something that you will watch vintages of and you can add to your collection. And so that's something, another side note. Where Rapasso and Valpolicella, there will be more of those coming all the time, so you can definitely enjoy the bottles that you have. Now let's talk about the Sweet Baby Sister, and this is 100% one of my favorite sweet wines and definitely one of my favorite Italian sweet wines. And so this is Recioro di Valpolicella. This is a red sweet wine. And if you're not a sweet wine fan, and I find this very often, that people will tell me, Erin, I like sweets, but I just find the consistency of sweet wine too gooey, too thick. And sometimes this is a texture thing and you might not enjoy it. What's so wonderful about the Recioto de Valpolicella is that it's going to have the mouthfeel of a regular red wine. It's not going to have that richness that comes with a lot of sweet wines where it is much more concentrated, but it has sweet flavors. So again, we have those dried wines. So for Amarone, where we took those dried grapes and we allowed the yeast to eat all the sugar, so we ended up with a dry wine style. When we make Recioto, we actually stop the yeast from eating the sugar and then the sweet sugar is left in the wine and so now we have this beautiful lighter style of sweet wine it is delicious and if you love cherries and blackberries and raspberries and anything dark chocolate or chocolate desserts anything you would put a berry sauce on top of if you will this is a wonderful wine style and it doesn't need to be served with anything fancy. And so this is a great segue of let's go through these wine styles and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite food pairings for each one now. So for the Recioto, since we're starting here, we love to start with dessert. So with the Recioto, what I will serve with it is I love those long biscuit cookies that have chocolate on the inside. You can get them in a can. I'm not even sure what they're called, um, but they're just a long biscuit cookie. They crunch a little bit. There's chocolate inside. Super easy dessert also just great dark chocolate so just pieces of dark chocolate you can put out and snack on these if you'd like you can put out some walnuts if you want something to balance with the sweetness uh, panna cotta definitely you could do here if you wanted to stay along with the Italian dessert 
great cannolis definitely will work here as well as cheesecake with a coolie sauce so whether that's berries on top of it or raspberries anything like i said that has a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of berry is going to be wonderful but even just simple pound cake with some chocolate shavings and some fresh berries and whipped cream you're going to find this wine very versatile it is delicious and personally i would just chill it just a touch like 30 minutes to an hour in the fridge you literally just want the bottle to feel a little bit cooler on your hand but i think you'll find lots of ways to enjoy it so it's wonderful wonderful wine to try now let's talk about pairings for Val Policella. Val Policella, you can use anywhere where you would put a Beaujolais or Pinot Noir. So you can have this with roast chicken, salmon, picnic, great charcuterie, you're just having some meat and cheese, a selection of different foods. It's an easy sipping, wonderful wine if you're deciding what movie to watch, where you might be going for dinner. And you can definitely chill this a little bit, especially on a warm summer day. Just give it a slight chill, you'll find it very refreshing. All Italian wines are always gonna have, whether it's red or white, a wonderful natural acidity. And all four of these wines definitely bring that to the table as well. And because of the high acidity, it means that you can chill them a bit and they'll just become a bit refreshing. So definitely the Valpolicella, you can chill as well. Easy, easy wine, definitely leftovers anytime you want. Repasso, I love this with pizza, lasagna, any meat-based simple pasta, meatballs and spaghetti, um, anything like that. It is delicious. It's super versatile if you want to have it with burgers, steaks. Repasso is just that wine you can pull out anytime. Anything with a tomato sauce that has meat in it, this will be brilliant with because the tomato sauce brings the acidity, the meat brings the intensity, and remember, Repasso is gonna have a bit more weight than that Valpolicella, so if you're having something a little bit heavier, maybe a four meat pizza, if you will, or something like that, grilled vegetables, grilled mushrooms, anything that needs a bit more weight, this is going to be delicious. So Repasso, wonderful wine style. Now, let's talk about food pairings for Amarone. Amarone is generally reserved for Sunday night dinner, if you will, to classically in Italy. It's going to be for a fancier sort of family affair served with foods that are slow cooked. So think Osco Busco, you're going to think short ribs, a wonderful roast, maybe big steaks, Something with meat, if you're doing wonderful pastas with wild boar would be a traditional pairing, but beef, portobello mushrooms, this needs slow cooked savory foods to go with it. And it's a big wine, it's going to need a big dish. Uh, definitely during cooler months, this is a comfort wine, but this is a special occasion wine, generally served for dishes that have been slow cooked and given lots of love in the kitchen and comes together to create a perfect pairing on the table. So those are some ideas for you in regards to food pairings for all four types. So let's just quickly recap everything we covered today because I know we've covered a lot and we've only stayed in one small area of Italy, but let's go through the key facts to know about Amarone and all of its wine siblings. So the first thing we covered was where does Amarone come from? Amarone comes from within the Veneto region, a wine region outside of Venice called Valpolicella. It's always going to be a blended wine style. It's going to be made with three grape varieties, Corvina being the prominent quality grape, Rondinella and Molinera. So these three grapes always create a blend. Amarone is going to be made with dried out grape varieties. On purpose, we are going to allow those grapes four to five months to dry out before we start a very slow fermentation. Amarone is also going to be fairly high in alcohol because of the amount of sugar in those grapes. That's going to translate to a higher alcohol amount. So a little sneaky there. Be careful. Valpolicella is the youngest brother, the lightest of the wine styles. Super easy. You can definitely chill it. Repasso we talked about is a blend of a Valpolicella base put into the barrels of the Amarone after we've taken the Amarone out. So Repasso gets the best of both of its brothers. And then we talked about this beautiful little sister, Recioto de Valpolicella. And this is a wonderful sweet red wine made from those three great varieties and is delicious and brings bright cherries and raspberries to the table. So now you can go and have a great time shopping. The next time you're in the store, definitely take a wander over to the Italian section or if you're in the restaurant, take a look and see what's available and hopefully you have a better understanding of all four of those different wine styles.
I hope you've had fun learning with me today. As always, if you're looking to understand more about your own palette and wine styles that you like, my free palette personality quiz is there for you. Eight quick questions and you'll get an entire booklet all about your palette personality. And you can do that at my website, winegirlacademy.com. Now be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes come out every Tuesday. I want to thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you've learned a lot about Amarone and his wine siblings. Have a wonderful week. Cheers to you. Bye now.